This video shows both one-person and two-person alignment with all settings at default values. Refer to the installation guide for information on adjusting settings. With the system controller, receivers and transmitters installed, apply power and wait for the display to cycle through its test sequence, which takes about three seconds. The error code, E02, will be displayed indicating that the system is not yet set up and we are ready to start commissioning. For other menu indications, refer to the installation guide. You will notice there is a locked padlock icon showing that the system controller is in the user menu. In this menu, settings can be reviewed, but changes cannot be made to settings or to alignment. To align the system, access the engineering menu by entering the passcode using the keypad. The default is one, two, three, four. The padlock symbol will be unlocked and you will now be in the engineering menu. The next step is to find how many receivers are connected to the system controller. Access Find by highlighting the first icon on the left and pressing the tick button. To start the automatic Find sequence, press tick a second time. The display shows a countdown whilst finding receivers. If one receiver is connected, the countdown will take 10 seconds. If two receivers are connected, the countdown will exit as soon as both receivers are found. The receiver icon at the top left of the display shows which receivers have been found. The display also shows 2R to indicate the number of receivers found. Press tick to accept the found receivers and to return to the engineering menu. If the number of receivers found is not correct, retry by pressing the cross button on the system controller and reselecting find or refer to troubleshooting in the installation guide. The error code E05 means that the receivers have been found but are not aligned. With the correct number of receivers found, we can commence alignment. The following stages are carried out for each receiver and transmitter pair in turn. You can select between receivers by toggling the up and down keys whilst in the engineering menu. We will first align receiver 1. Notice how the receiver icon identifies which receiver is selected. The first stage of alignment is to align the receiver onto the transmitter using the integrated laser in the receiver. To activate the laser, select the second icon. The display now shows how many minutes the flashing laser will remain on for. This can be changed if required. Press tick to accept the number of minutes and turn on the laser. Whenever the laser is on, the system will be in fault. The laser can also be turned on by using the laser switch on the receiver head whilst in the engineering menu. We are going to use the thumb wheels to steer the laser in the receiver towards the transmitter. The laser is low powered and flashes only once per second. However, it is a sensible precaution to avoid looking directly into it. It is not essential to steer the laser perfectly onto the transmitter. Within 15 centimeters is all that is required. If you cannot see the laser, refer to troubleshooting. Now that the receiver is correctly aligned, press the laser switch on the receiver or press cross on the system controller to turn the laser off and exit to the engineering menu. 
with the receiver aligned, we can start the alignment of the transmitter. At the system controller, select the third icon. ALN will be shown on the display. Press tick to enter alignment mode. The number shown on the LCD is the alignment value. Alignment can be completed by one person using the alignment LEDs on the receiver or two people by referring to the alignment value on the LCD of the system controller. For two-person alignment, one person will need to stay at the system controller to communicate the alignment value to the person at the transmitter. Alignment is achieved by adjusting the transmitter direction and, if necessary, the transmitter power. During alignment, ensure that the beam path is kept clear. At the transmitter, ensure that the transmit power is at maximum. The transmitter power is adjusted by gently turning the single turn potentiometer. For one person alignment, look back towards the receiver to view the alignment LEDs. For two person alignment, refer to the alignment value on the LCD. In this state, there are three possibilities. The first possibility is that the LEDs flash green with alternating short and long flashes. In this case, the received signal is too high and the receiver is saturated. This is indicated on the LCD as a value of 180. Reduce the transmit power by turning the potentiometer anti-clockwise until the flashing stops. The amber LED may flash to show that the signal is dropping followed by no LED flashes. The alignment value on the LCD will also decrease. If possible, reduce the transmit power so that the alignment value is around 100. The second possibility is that the LEDs flash amber with alternating short and long flashes. In this case, the receiver is not seeing any signal from the transmitter. This is indicated on the LCD as a value of zero. Adjust the transmitter thumb wheels to better align the transmitter onto the receiver until the flashing amber LED goes out. The green LED may flash to show the signal has increased, followed by no LED flashes. The LCD will show a value of between 2 and 178. The third possibility is that there are rapid green flashes followed by no LEDs flashing. The LCD will show a value of between 2 and 178. It is when in this state that the receiver is seeing enough transmitted signal to allow further alignment. During this stage of alignment, the transmitter will be adjusted so that it is centered onto the receiver. Whilst looking at the receiver alignment LEDs, or alignment value, select one thumb wheel and rotate it one quarter of a turn and let go. Amber flashes on the receiver indicate the signal is reducing and the movement was in the wrong direction. There will be a corresponding decrease of the alignment value on the LCD. The same thumb wheel should be rotated by one quarter of a turn in the opposite direction to achieve a green flash and an increase in alignment value on the LCD. Green flashes indicate that the signal received is increasing and that the transmitter movement is in the correct direction. There will be a corresponding increase of the alignment value on the LCD. Wait until the green LED has stopped flashing or the alignment value on the LCD is stabilized before making further adjustments. Continue by making further quarter turns in the same direction, letting go of the thumb wheel and observing the alignment LEDs or LCD value each time. If the LED flashes green or if the LCD value increases, continue in the same direction as the signal is increasing, remembering to allow the LED to go out or the LCD alignment value to stabilize each time.
As the transmitter alignment is improved by moving the thumb wheels, it is possible that the receiver can become saturated, as indicated by alternating short and long green LED flashes and an alignment value of 180 on the LCD. If this occurs, reduce the transmit power by turning the potentiometer anti-clockwise until the green LED goes out or so that the alignment value drops to around 100. Do not adjust it so that the amber LED flashes with alternating short and long pulses or the LCD drops to zero, indicating that the receiver is no longer seeing the transmitter. Continue with the alignment on the same thumb wheel in the same direction. When the LED flashes amber, or the alignment value starts to decrease, the transmitter has been moved past the point of best alignment in that axis. Rotate back one-eighth of a turn, or so that the LCD alignment value returns to its highest seen value. Alignment in this axis is completed. Now adjust the other thumb wheel using the same steps as for the first thumb wheel. With alignment completed, return to the system controller and press tick to accept the alignment and return to the engineering menu. The system controller indication LED and relay pair corresponding to this receiver will now be in normal operation mode. If two receivers are connected to the system controller, repeat the alignment process after having selected the second receiver. The green LED on the system controller will flash every 10 seconds to indicate the system is operating. When a receiver is in fault, the corresponding LED on the system controller will flash amber every 10 seconds. Similarly, when in fire, the red LED on the receiver and the corresponding LED on the system controller will flash red every 10 seconds. Now it is time to conduct a fire and fault test to confirm correct commissioning. A remote fire test is performed by selecting the remote fire test icon, third from right. Press tick once to test the fire LED on the underside of the receiver. A second tick will simulate a fire condition in order to test the relay and wiring back to the fire panel. The display will show fire and the fire control panel should indicate a fire condition. The system controller LED corresponding to the receiver under test will flash red. Press the cross button to end the test and return to normal operation. To perform the fault test, Completely cover the receiver using non-reflective material, taking less than two seconds to do so. After the delay to fault time, the system controller indication LED and relay pair corresponding to this receiver will now be in a fault condition. Uncover the receiver to return the system to normal operation. To perform a manual fire test, Slowly cover half the receiver using non-reflective material, taking more than two seconds to do so. After the delay to fire time, the system controller indication LED and relay pair corresponding to this receiver will now be in a fire condition. 
uncover the receiver to return the system to normal operation. Commissioning is now complete. There are further settings that can be made. For example, the fire threshold can be set for each detector. The delay to fire and fault can be set for each detector. The system mode can be set to latching or non-latching. Refer to user guide for further instructions. Please refer to the user guide and CD included with the product for further information.